the, the future is wireless. Just uh, just forget about that. Oh, that's interesting. The future yeah, yeah. is wireless. The future is 5G and it will be all be wireless. Forget about all those cables. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's another way to see it. Yeah, that's a good another uh, yeah. point of view. It is so, important when you're. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think Shireen, I don't know if she's connecting with us, but I might get started and she can f continue as she comes back. Uh, mainly, she wanted to show uh, this uh, slide uh, for the digitalization services. Um, as everybody knows, Symbius Digital is a branch of uh, Symbius Consulting Group. Symbius Consulting Group has been there since 1999. They have over 20 years of experience in lean methodologies and Six Sigma. Uh, they have been branched out for maybe over five years in supply chain, and now they're looking into take, riding the wave of the Industry 4.0 with um, uh, digitalization. Uh, so they started the Symbius Digital. Um, we're trying to be a pioneer in the uh, establishing of um, uh, this uh, transformation in companies, whether it be factories or services as well. Uh, we come up with this triangle, Shireen actually, she's our um, uh, uh, think tank. She came up with this triangle for our services model. Uh, we have a focus uh, mainly on analytics and data mining. Uh, we have trainings in uh, uh, the analytics uh, steps-by-step journey from descriptive uh, to prescriptive analytics. It's, um, it's very interesting because we use so many tools like uh, we're Microsoft partner as well. So we use uh, tools such as um, uh, Microsoft Power BI and Azure Machine Learning. Um, in these courses and uh, we also use data mining uh, we do the machine learning uh, uh, spectrum of uh, algorithms uh, we have uh, many uh, uh, clients that we've had successfully in this domain also on the other side we have process mining process mining is the action of uh, analyzing processes using their digital trace so there we use we track the data uh, by the, uh, how do you say, the, the footprints of each data. So for example, uh, uh, logs of transactions uh, and uh, uh, their con consec consecutive, sorry, let me just put my phone on mute. So consecutive transactions and uh, basically process mining is a, is a um, uh, uh, there are many softwares that use process mining and um, uh, what it does is it takes uh, a big log of, of the, for example, an ERP system, you know, it would have so many logs from finance to uh, uh, marketing to accounting and uh, it uh, uh, f even in manufacturing when the products came in when they were used depending on how deep we have the uh, analysis or the data in the system it will allow us to uh, force, foresee a track of uh, the start and end uh, points of our operations and it helps us see things from a, a biased point of view outside of the organization so not based on one perspective but on the system perspective so it's a very strong way of analyzing processes also we have on yes yes Ali, thank you for me. handling it yeah 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry for getting cut fen we can see you your camera is somehow looking at the ceiling so people would like to see you so if you can fix it it will be great thank you um thank you ali for explaining the digitalization services and triangle so basically we are here and this today is a very important day we asked our colleagues, uh, Matthew from Australia and Finn from uh, Europe, uh, from Copenhagen, actually to share with us what can be done. The idea is that you just can think about digitalization. You need to think how you can execute it, how it can make sense to you. We have been, and people have been talking about digitalization for years, but thanks to COVID-19, I'm sorry to say this, but it's accelerating things and people are thinking now differently. So uh, very important in the execution, day-to-day -day actions, people engagement to tracking, transformation. How you look at the transformation from raw material to finished good, there is something now called smart manufacturing or a smart operation. Part of the manufacturing, we have people and we have equipment. 
And when we talk about equipment, we measure equipment efficiency, OE, traceability. When we talk about people, we look at people engagement. And part of what we do is that we have been in the journey of operational excellence, looking at people, looking at processes, looking at technology, and how we can create governance and make real change on the floor. So part of it is that you want to have the formula where you engage people and equipment together. So that's why I like the combining of uh, Blackbird and Team Assurance. That's why I invited them both today, because most of people think about each solution alone, like a point of excellence. What we are here, we want to share with you the best practices, how we can make best use of both, how we can look at using IoT solution and a solution like what we have now with Blackbird mixed with Team Assurance. This is a simple animation. If we take it step by step, it was shared with one of our customers and I'm keen to share it with everyone today. If you look on the top left, you will find the factory. Ali, if you go back to animation, please, you go, to the factory where you see the pasta production line and the, we can have here mix of solutions. You can have animation or you can have digitalization connected to IoT device using Blackbird solution to monitor the productivity. You can connect it to a metal detector. You can have a camera. You can measure humidity. You can measure temperature. You can do lots of things. And here, you, as you can see, the operator is monitoring the process and he's putting some data input. Another step, if we move after that, we will take the whole data to a cloud where you can model the data and we can apply the data mining techniques. And we can even using the camera vision, we can use image processing. After that, we can take it to the top right where you can integrate the data with energy monitoring system if you have it. You can integrate it with SAP. You can get all the data, get all the OE reports, get everything in one place, which we call it one source of truth, where everyone is enjoying all the data in one place. Then after we have the data layer coming from every place, now we, it's about time how we can make people see it on the screens. Then the next step, till now it's an open loop. How can do shop floor meetings using now everyone talks about virtual meetings, talks about that visual management and KPIs should be measured by everyone and how we can close it by action plans real time. That's why we have the team assurance. That was just a quick meeting before I just, just like getting you interested in what we have today. So first I'd like Fen, please introduce yourself and then Matthew and then Ali, please Fen. Yeah, my name is uh, Finn Hunniger. I'm CEO of uh, Blackbird, uh, and I'm also the owner of Emendo Consulting Group. We are 75 uh, people, 10 in the US, and uh, and the rest here are based in Copenhagen. And um, we have been doing this digitalization actually hands-on, uh, adding, uh, collecting data since 2015. Our company is from 2006, um, and yeah, we do it every day. And I think. Uh, uh, I think what we can offer is the practical approach on how to get the data because uh, that can sometimes be a challenge to actually get the data. And we have many wonderful examples of people using data and getting lots of improvements out of it. Fantastic. So, Matthew? Uh, good afternoon and evening, everybody. My name is Matt Mafrici. I'm the CEO of Team Assurance. So, uh, we've been uh, on this journey for since 2016. Uh, my background is manufacturing engineering. I did 12 years with Toyota, so I am lean. If you cut me, I bleed lean uh, in a traditional sense. So part traditional lean, but also uh, I have another foot in the modern uh, uh, technology age. So coming up through uh, lean management, production management, engineering management, I've suffered the problems uh, that Shireen talked about briefly. So it's going to be great to uh, see the two uh, solutions today side by side because we've got a, a compelling story uh, with the two solutions uh, hand in hand. So thanks for having us today. So uh, if we start, Fen, can you give us a quick 10 minutes to share with us your experience? Because you have been doing this for more than five years, you have great stories, great experience. So can you share with us something today, please? Yeah. Yeah, let me share my screen. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing. Do you want to continue? Yes. There is a share button at the bottom near yeah. participants' polls, and yes, we can see your screen now. Okay. 
Good, good. All right. So, yeah, thank you for having me as well. Um, the, like I said before, we have been, uh, since 2015, uh, we have been uh, collecting data, but we have actually been worked within uh, Lean and Operational Excellence uh, since 2000. Um, and it was out of frustration that we couldn't get data, that we invented Blackbird. And in the beginning, it was actually an internal tool. And then the customers asked us to keep uh, our devices. So it was actually invention by, uh, by accident. Um, today we are we are uh, have installations in 27 uh, countries around the world. We have more than a thousand lines uh, production lines online all the time, uh, and a lot of data is flowing in. Uh, we're using Amazon Web Services, and uh, it's quite smooth. So just to set the scene, uh, the first industrial revolution uh, changed the world because of steam. Before uh, steam, we had uh, a horse and a cow and a windmill and maybe a, a river that could produce power. But all of a sudden, uh, the steam engine came and you could have 10,000 horsepower in one place and then factories changed and so on. And it's the same thing that is happening today. The companies are changing because they have data they start to understand their markets better. They start to under understand their products and their production lines a lot better because they're using data. And the key question uh, we sh should all ask ourselves before investing into anything, it, it is what data can actually improve the uh, business. So really just have a meeting, sit down and say, if we can, if we can know anything, what, what, would it, uh, what would it actually be? What should we, what information can help us? So that's the first step, start to discuss what information do we need? And if we could get that information, how will we apply it in the factory? Slide five. Um, so the problem is once you want to have data and you go out in your factory, you realize that 65% of all the machines out there in general uh, was not designed to deliver data. So that's a real problem. So any, anything from agricultural processes to, uh, to pharmaceuticals, they, they, the companies really have a challenge to get the information that they want. And that's where we come in. So most companies, they connect, collect data like this. They take the sensor into a PLC and then into a SCADA system, maybe some SQL database to keep the history. But, uh, but it's quite complex. And uh, we can, of course, also do that. We, uh, we know how to do this. But what we prefer to do is to use uh, IoT, Internet of Things, where we uh, use uh, a wireless uh, box to, uh, to stream the data directly from the production line. So we don't have to do all that infrastructure. We can simply apply uh, the, uh, the sensors and get the data in an hour. And the way we do it is that we have uh, invented these small boxes called Factbirds. And um, inside the, the Factbird, there's two small computers. One is one is connecting to the internet and the other one is connecting to any industrial sensor. It doesn't have to be any specific sensor, but any industrial sensor that you already have on the line or you can add an additional sensor to the line, we can connect using our little box. We can also stream a video. And then of course, we can also connect uh, to your PLCs using uh, Capware. So what is uh, sort of to get practical, what you do is you go out and you add uh, a box to your line. And it's a good idea to place the sensor on the bottleneck. You can also put more sensors, but at least there should be one on the bottleneck because if the bottleneck stops, the rest of the line will stop. So the sensor is uh, transmitting all the time to, uh, to the database in the cloud, how many parts are being produced. And then they are, uh, you as an operator or manager can see the data on any device anywhere in the world on your phone, tablet, tablet or computer. Then if the line stop, uh, then it starts to send zeros and then on the user uh, interface, uh, the operator will be asked, why did the line stop? And then, um, and then they can select among predefined uh, stop causes or if we are connected to the PLC, we'll just take the stop cause from the PLC. But most people uh, prefer to have the operators given the, the stop cause. We also stream a video, as I said before. So the first thing you will do uh, when you add the sensor is uh, you'll get a simple picture like this uh, and you don't have to program anything. Everything is ready. Uh, it's just plug in the power and enter the web page. And then what you see on the graph is uh, on the X axis, the time and on the Y axis, the output from the line. And down below, we have a number of key performing indicators uh, uh, showing uh, how much you produce, number of stops, value adding time and so on. 
and all uh, if you click on this screen you can do trends uh, you can select the time period you would like and uh, it's all online and is coming up really quick so that is what we call a level one and already here people get surprised and i have to say most of most people get very disappointed because they see the like in this case they see the the lines are stopping now and then but that's the reality and just visualizing the output is a major improvement of course, you can also click on the graph and if you have video, you'll see live video uh, from that point in time that you, you, uh, you, you, uh, you pointed at. And we have customers that uh, support machines in other countries and then they sit in, in you know, for instance, in Denmark and they monitor uh, lines in Algeria. The second step is to ask, like I said before, to ask the operators to key in the reasons for the stop courses. And here, this is where you make the money because here you see the analysis that comes out and it's fully automatic in the system. You get a Pareto chart showing what is the biggest challenge on the line? What is the biggest reason for the stop course? And we have ways of visualizing um, how bad it is. And the little dots below is actually visualizing the stops uh, due to the, in this case, the Kista. And this is what the operators are experiencing. So many stops. And that's very frustrating for them and it's a waste of money. Level three is uh, when you start giving uh, targets uh, for the batches and the products to say, okay, we have a pace that we have to follow. And, uh, and then you show people whether they are ahead or behind. Um, and these are shown on last large flat screens in the factory. And of course you can have visualization anywhere in the factory with the progress of batches and the OE numbers uh, being showed. Uh, the next uh, and final level uh, for now is the level four, uh, where we do predictive maintenance. So basically we add sensors to uh, key equipment, typically critical equipment. And these sensors are transmitting, uh, for instance, temperature or vibrations uh, to the cloud. And we can put up alarms and text messages. Uh, and uh, and this way, you try to detect the problems before they become problems. And uh, we have a number of uh, very good success stories uh, for CIP pumps in uh, the pharmaceutical industry. Finally, a few uh, customers. Uh, this is a chicken manufacturer. They have uh, added 150 production lines in five countries in just 12 months. One key learning here is that they were really smart because they also put money aside from uh, for not only for, for Blackbird, but also for the consulting. So they, they um, so that the training, so one thing is to get data, another thing is to make the organization use that data. So I think just investing in the technology is not good. You need to invest both in the technology and also the training and learning for, you know, to teach people how to use the data and act upon it. Here's the largest pump manufacturer in the world, uh, Grundfos. They have 250 lines in, the, in the, a lot of different countries and they, uh, they use simply uh, the data system to, uh, to get the transparency and improved decision making. Uh, Bosch uh, is a very good partner of us. Uh, they, they use uh, it uh, for uh, improving their uh, sub-suppliers. So if they have sub-suppliers that they would like to help uh, become smarter, they use uh, Blackbird. And then here's another example is a pharmaceutical company. They have 36 lines connected in Denmark and France. Uh, they have a private cloud. Uh, and here we are only connecting to the PLCs uh, using something called uh, Capware. So, key conclusion, uh, there is no future without studying data. Uh, companies will fight and uh, we believe that uh, the companies that will not focus on data will have uh, maybe not a problem tomorrow, but at least uh, in 2035, they're probably, they're probably gone because they've been outcompeted, just like uh, it happened in the first industrial revolution. That's it for me. Um, um, thank you, thank you, uh, Fen, for this. We will we will take some questions at the end if uh, if you allow us, please. Yeah, sure. And um, looking at Bosch, how long have you been with them? Just if you mention. Well, they started. We were in. Uh, I think it was uh, in 17, uh, 2017. We met them. They invited us to uh, something called Connected World in uh, Berlin. And uh, today we have a collaboration uh, with them where we actually. Uh, it's actually, uh, they, they have an internal consulting group that goes out and help their suppliers. And, uh, and uh, we have, uh, so they are, they are applying this at their suppliers since 2017, 18. 
And uh, today we also have a common uh, collaboration with them on a project. Uh, it's actually a champagne filling company where we are adding, um, we're adding barcode readers to, uh, to the lines so that normally when you want to do a good OEE, you would need to know what product is running on the line, but this company doesn't have a, an, an e good ERP system. So we're actually just reading the barcode and then we say, oh, it's that product. And then we set the target speeds. Uh, so that's, that's a project we do together with, uh, with Bosch uh, right now to develop that technology. So uh, they're really, really kind, super kind people. We, we really appreciate the collaboration. Wow, that's fantastic. You have great stories. I just, yeah. it's, it's never enough. I always uh, enjoy your stories and the successes you do with the customers. <laughs> and I'm happy uh, in this uh, webinar to announce that we invited uh, Fen and we invited Matthew because we are their partners and we work together yeah. on several projects. Yeah. So it has been fantastic if you can look at the technology and how it can be integrated and how is everyone is open to everyone because yeah. what happened in old times is not going to sustain anyone anymore. No. So, uh, if we like Matthew from, I know it's late for you now, but um, it will be great. I thank you first for joining us and accepting that you, you are in Australia. We are already seven hours difference. So, um, Matthew, you have a fantastic story about your solution and, and, and it's going like fire in, in Australia. You have so many customers and it's going amazing. So, would you please share with us the story because you are a lean guy like most of us. So, how did it happen? Yeah, look, we, uh, we face the problems that uh, many people are, are facing today uh, on the way up uh, through, through the different roles, basically, as engineer, as assistant production manager, as production manager, uh, as, as lean leader, as regional lean leader, multi-site leader. These are roles that are difficult. Uh, and so uh, when we're managing, like you, like, like you said, Shireen, many people, uh, and, and we're trying to make change and connecting the, the technology and making it meaningful, uh, that's a difficult job. So we've uh, built a tool from the ground up that uh, solves a lot of these problems that we've lived through. So uh, Team Assurance is there to uh, engage the whole workforce uh, with information, with data, align them to something that's very meaningful uh, and keep it real and real time. and and then turn that uh, potential energy to what matters in the organization and accelerate the transformation, which Finn spoke about uh, very nicely around the need to always transform. So there's challenges and they're typically for these sorts of roles, supply chain, manufacturing, heads, certainly continuous improvement and operational heads. They've got a difficult job. They've got to scale a methodology that have, they've got standardization continuous improvement and learning to do in their large organizations. And of course, safety and quality are first and foremost. So we've come across many struggles and these are, here's a summary of uh, a number of those struggles. So the front line, of course, is managing a dynamic situation. And so they don't need to go into many different systems. That's not helpful for them. So that front line managing this uh, ever changing environment needs some consolidation of systems, not separate systems. Uh, the second point is we talk about the problem finding machine and Finn spoke so well about his solution and it's a fantastic solution uh, that we would call a problem finding machine. Absolutely, 100%. So now, as you've rightly said at the start, uh, humans now must take action and, and affect change. So this infrastructure in most organisations today is, is worn out. And so we're talking about whiteboards, spreadsheets and databases uh, management by email and we're talking about paperwork that is only relevant to a small group of people so problem solving and improvement being a team sport we need to include everybody and so these medians mediums can sometimes exclude people where they shouldn't information also like material should flow we make money by moving material and goods and services across the organization so the connective tissue in an organization is often emails, phone calls and meetings, and we cannot scale these things. Nobody wants to scale those things and it's difficult. Of course, when it's continuous improvement is sitting outside business as usual, we have a problem in itself. So 
something that incorporates continuous improvement into every day and every role is first and foremost uh, the issue that we solve. Furthermore, spreading the numbers of people engaged in, in improvement activity, growing the improvement activity without the administration. If we have correlation with that administration, we have a bottleneck and a, a sustainability issue. Furthermore, technology that only caters for the regular computer users is now becoming a risk to that organisation. We have the largest segment of the workforce unserviced by tools. Uh, so we have a big opportunity ahead of us and we know that, uh, that the workforce has skilled up in the last 10 years in these technologies. So the solutions. Here we have an example of uh, Team Assurance alive in a frontline team uh, that is managing their own data by themselves, input by them, triggered by their traditional uh, visual management, but they are triggered to take action by themselves and we have a team leader who can coach the methodology of improvement, whatever that organization's methodology is, uh, they can become the coach. Previously, we have all the problems coming back to one person and their, their role is to now improve. This is the busy person that we're talking about earlier. So low barrier to entry, where the problems are happening, like Finn said, where we've pinpointed an issue, now we have to go in and go down deep. So easy access for every employee to take data and take action at the point of course is what we're about. So this means that meetings take on a different nature within the organisation when we're not bringing problems to the uh, meeting. We're bringing a story of what we're doing and it's live and it may have happened 12 hours ago. And so we have 12 hours of work already undertaken before we have our meeting. Uh, this breaks the cycle of bringing problems uh, and changes it to we have executed our improvement methodology and now we are sharing and learning and being coached. Of course, the technology is cloud technology. It's on AWS as well. Um, it's everywhere that you have a browser and, and a login credential. So in the COVID times, our clients have been very happy that they could continue with structure, with their eyes on the absolute goals of the organization and their daily performance. Um, we've seen many organizations now uh, having many uh, virtual meetings, but there's no structure. They've lost their structure. So we're helping those uh, organizations right now. So I must say that we do sing along very nicely with traditional visual management. Uh, but as I said before, there's information that should be in context, in place, quick and easy for the team to use but there should be information that should flow to all parts of the organization. That's left to right, up and down. So this is where the learnings of the organization can be brought to bear. Uh, and of course, when these employees go back to their uh, computers, their, their mobile devices, this information comes with them. Fantastic. So our, yeah, our, amazing. Our, our basic architecture is very simple, Shireen, and you've been living this methodology for many years. Uh, an orga any organization needs to have a strategy, a strategic A3, a policy deployment, a HOTION, um, uh, a true north, and they must cascade that. And normally they do that through a number of smaller, broken down, cross-functional activities. What Team Assurance does is allow the direct connection between the strategy to the project management. Uh, and then those tasks are then managed in the tiered daily management system. And I showed you a few photos there where that's, that's an example of the daily management in action. So this breaks the dynamic of day job and improvement job. They are the one. And the one bit of in information can be used three in three places. So the administration is the minimum. Uh, but the speed and the impact and the learning can be the maximum. So it's a very simple architecture. So um, I think we miss a point here before you continue because some people are asking a question because we are actually live on Facebook. So you have some mm -hmm. other audience on Facebook for you and Fen, by the way, okay? So uh, Matthew, how do you find the problem? 
How do we identify it? I know, of course, the answer, but I need you to answer everyone. What, how do you generate the problem? How do you, what are the details of the problem finding? So uh, a good example would be to take an example where uh, through, through Blackbird, uh, the case packer number one has, has been suffering uh, lots of stops and we need to now go there. And the main thing is that we have employees already at the working uh, area. So we're empowering those employees to now pick up a mobile device and begin, and begin the problem solving. Uh, so normally this happens in a team. We have maintenance, we have quality, we have uh, operations. So that problem solving can now be visible and start to be acted on uh, in real time. So just using team assurance on a mobile device, uh, you can trigger an incident, you can trigger uh, improvement ideas, maintenance requests, activities that must be taken surely. Uh, and then this information uh, flows directly into that daily management system, whether it's a, a shiftly handover, uh, a daily operations level tier two or exec level tier three. That information is available. Also, we can use the, uh, the technology. So something like Blackbird that sends alerts and we talked briefly before the meeting around sending alerts to email and, and SMS. So these sorts of alerts can then trigger automatically an action if a, if a certain amount of downtime has been reached, we need a certain level of problem solving to be done. So the team uh, can collect that data automatically and begin their problem solving using the organization's improvement science and methodology. Okay. Is that answer? Thank you. Yeah, please continue. So any device with a browser uh, makes it available to every employee. Often they use their own devices uh, or these devices are already available in the organization. So everybody is using the same information, uh, messaging. Um, so the various use cases, uh, strategic A3 deployment, uh, daily management activity, as I mentioned, problem solving, um, methodology that's standardized in the organization. We don't bring uh, methodology on top of the one that exists. We can amplify and elevate the one that's there. Uh, project management, as you can see, this is an example on the left. These activities now turn up in the daily management. Routine checklists and leader standard work. These are the tools. So the capability exists now in the workforce. We just need to enable and empower that teamwork. So around engagement, it's about 100% of the employees. They have a day job and their second job is to improve their day job. Alignment, this is about real time visibility and status checking for a team, a function, a site or the whole organization in real time. And once we have these two pointing it at the things that matter, it's about speed. Time is of the essence. And so we need to move and be agile so the results, we've, we've got customers in uh, food and bev and pharma and supply chain and logistics, all manufacturing and even in hospitals. Um, and the sorts of results we get are across the whole gamut of safety, quality, delivery, cost, uh, people and sustainability, injury rate reduction, cost reduction targets, speed, as I mentioned, continuous compliance, uh, employee satisfaction when we get this empowerment and the communication levels, ROI for team assurance, we're not an expensive solution. We can pay back a year's uh, license even within a couple of months off very often. And of course, once we go in large organizations across multiple sites, this is where we get the leveraging of the uh, improvements, of the learnings, of the standardizations, uh, and of course, we're multilingual like the Blackbird solution as well. And that's dynamic translation as well. So allowing two parties to uh, communicate in their own language. So thank you, Shireen. That's yeah, all I had for you. today. Yeah, yeah. We we'll still have more questions. So uh, yes. if we move on to, the, to Ali, um, it has been interesting that these are solutions for people to do the work, to help the operator and the companies to help us see the machines 
So uh, I invited Ali especially today because our team came up with a solution about employees wellness as well. So uh, thinking about people, thinking about people's safety in the time of COVID-19, um, our team was thinking about something and it's here. I just asked Ali to quickly share it, please, if you can share your screen, yes, right. because we can use the technology because some people don't understand the meaning of digitalization. So there is something called digitization and it goes up to digitalization. You digitize when you just make things instead of paper, you make it paperless and you make it using computer and you make it using the technology or IoT. When you connect all the IoT devices and digital tools together, you become to the world or you join the world of digitalization. So um, basically you started to think about something else. It was about our team. Now the companies have the facilities, they have the raw materials, they have the equipment, they have the tools, they have even the orders, they have the customers, they have the raw materials, they have suppliers. But if you don't have the people in place, this is a big problem. We became into a problem of business continuity, business disruption or business interruption. So if my people are not safe, it's a big issue. So how can I monitor my people's safety? How can I have it in a very simple, relaxed way? People now are back to work and most of the people whom we talk to, statistics globally surveys, people feel it's too early, we are not safe, we are stressed, we are not very comfortable to go to work now. So we start to think about people wellness. You can have an ERP to manage the materials like SAP Oracle, which is the best info or whatever. You can have technologies and we need to add a layer of taking care of our people. It's the same you have about your equipment, your ideas, your machines, measuring the OE, which is we need, but there is a missing link, which is your people. So how we can have a system to guarantee the wellness of our people? Because we talk now about the new normal. Things are not the same. People have to be engaged. So we took the extra mile and I invited Ali to share it quickly. So if we move on, Ali, to the presentation. It's about people wellness because people are our assets. We keep saying this, but now it's proven. If you don't take good care of your people, your business will be gone. So uh, we basically have four solutions, but it's, it's, it's now about the how we can use digitalization anti-coronavirus as an anti-coronavirus solution. And I'll go back to you as well, Matt, because you have your customers who adapted team assurance to Corona, right? So move on, yes, Ali. Yes, we did. Yeah, yes. yeah, Ali, if you can just take us into only five minutes, how it's, how it's going on, just share with people, please. Okay, so we have uh, the combination of software and hardware technologies together in order to uh, improve or uh, make sure that our employees are in the best health uh, uh, possible and uh, to not lose our employees. And if be the case, uh, uh, God forbid, then we're able to contain the problem and contain the uh, contamination. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a combination of tools between, um, uh, for example, reviewing risk, uh, having risk compliance. So we, we on different checkpoints, we see who is uh, wearing their mask, what's their temperature. So we use some devices. We can use some thermal camera, for example, in order to see uh, their temperatures and to see who's wearing the mask by using uh, uh, image processing. Uh, that will help us get a centralized view, as we saw in this slide, uh, in a centralized way, who has a high risk alert and who has low risk uh, review or risk review or uh, who is at risk. And that will help us to take action if somebody is not complying to, uh, their, uh, to the protocols, the new safety protocol, then we can give them a, uh, uh, to make them or help them, give them an alert that you're not uh, caring for your safety and you have to take some precautions uh, that are commonly known nowadays. Uh, we can also integrate with different things such as uh, uh, smart sanitizers. Smart sanitizers would have RFID tags that would help us also see uh, who's not, uh, sanitize, who's not uh, sanitizing their hand frequently. We can have smart elevators with the disinfecting ele elevator with dis disinfecting elevators. Uh, which sanitize themselves after a particular amount of use, air quality sensors, uh, smart cameras, as we mentioned, and we add the combination of having uh, artificial intelligence with this combination. So we care for our employees. Another thing with the employees, we can help them get certifications, and we're gonna see that, and, and to track also their social distancing, who's complying and who's not complying. 
and um, and we can also add uh, added features such as sketch productivity and scheduling uh, tools also touchless attendance so this is some screenshots from the system we have once they uh, register once we get the hr personnel or team leader uh, he puts in the uh, list of emails of the employees uh, we they get a welcoming message and they get to create their website and check their health data whether they have particular health concerns what their age group is like so we know who's at higher risk and who's at lower risk they get, uh, this is their landing page for the employees. Uh, so daily we get to ask them uh, what is, how, the, how are they be feeling before work? How are they be feeling, how are they, how, how are they feeling after work? They can also report particular risks if they see someone not complying or something not in the particular safe way that it should be, uh, maybe missing sanitizer or somebody at close distance or they see someone not complying and the likes any kind of risk source they can report or if they need a particular help uh, for example they are they feel really sick and they need somebody to follow up with them so we can have volunteers to go and check up check up with them and the, and so we also have this is what the questionnaire would look like the one at the bottom the one at the bottom here before coming to work uh, this is just an example here what, how they feel and based on their answers we give them uh, scores uh, also this is a particular uh, feature in, in this tool employee wellness journey uh, platform uh, we have uh, courses that they can take and register for and then we can quiz them after they do the course to make sure that they are aware of the basics of safety with coronavirus or if they're aware of the facility design for coronavirus, if, if it's a facility manager, for example. Uh, this is what the system would look like. It's uh, basically a lot of inputs from different devices. These devices would be in the cloud or on-premise. Uh, they go into the engine that we talked about, our platform, and they output through smart screens, uh, different reminders, uh, monitoring system, and uh, risk review. Uh, we can have also a dashboard which tells us where, which um, locations are at high risk because the system uh, is pre-configured to be by, by location and by team. So we can know which team is at high risk and which facility is at, at high risk. Again, this is a journey from home and back to home while the going to home and going back to home from the workplace. And we get risk alerts, as we mentioned, we integrate artificial intelligence uh, with multiple factors, we created over 40 factors uh, of uh, deciding the risk parameter and compliance. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Ali, uh, for sharing this. And it's, uh, it's an example how we can use technology and how we can integrate technology together. So uh, um, now it's, uh, we have some questions, if you allow us to, uh, to share it with you. So I'll start first by the question coming from Ahmed. I think it's for you, Fan, and he's saying, is this solution for Blackbird applicable to any PLC type, Siemens, Alan Bradley? He has a question. Yes, because uh, if, uh, so most customers are just using the IoT box and then we don't connect to the PLC. But if we connect to the PLCs, uh, we are using a software called Kepware. It's an American software, Kepware. And okay. in the Kip, in the Kipware server, there's uh, drivers for all kind of PLCs, and then uh, we're using the Kipware IoT Connect uh, function, and it connects to Amazon Web Services. And um, so we, um, one of my consultants was at, was at a company called Trio Plast here in Denmark. They make uh, it's a plastic factory, and he was there four hours uh, from he walked in till he came out. Four hours later, we had. Uh, data from his uh, PLC using the Kepware server. Wow, so, um, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. The, it is, of course, the, taking the data from PLC is far more complex than just adding the IoT boxes. Uh, but of yes. course, then you can take all the registers in there. So I recommend that people start maybe with the boxes and then as they get more, you know, more hungry for more data, maybe they can push to the PLCs. And for the PLCs, they also need to be, uh, you know, less than 10 years old in order to, to be able to interface with uh, Kepware. But yes, Kepware, still, yeah, yeah. 
K E P W A R E. You can uh, you can browse it. Very nice uh, piece of software. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Fantastic. So um, yes, and it's one of the. It, it was talking about in USA. Some people were talking about that the journey is endless, and there was really a shock that some companies said they already finished the digitalization journey. And that's really was a shock to everyone because it's endless. As you said, it's, you cannot take it all. You can't have it all set up in once. You have to take it piece by piece. So it's, uh, the journey is fruitful. So, uh, nobody has, nobody has yeah. completed the digital journey. Yes, no. yes, because you no, know, nobody, but it's, that was an, it's, that's it. That's how people think about it. And that's, really? okay. Um. So uh, another question for you, Fen, it's how much the accuracy of the predictive model of maintenance? Well, uh, uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, predicting, I mean, just simple trends uh, and uh, uh, will get you very far. Uh, so when we uh, typically what you do, uh, in, in, let's say the practical application is that you put in limits. And uh, so you have, of course, have the limit where things break down, but then you put uh, lower alarm limits. So you actually... Uh, uh, get to uh, to know what's that something is coming. If you want to use uh, predictions, uh, you can use uh, Amazon's uh, uh, forecaster model uh, to uh, to forecast, and uh, the accuracy is basically uh, depending on the previous data that you have. But but you just just to make sure that everyone understands, you don't need to use AI or any some. Uh, funny uh, technology to have predictive maintenance. You simply put in lower alarm limits, and when you hit that, uh, then you know that something is coming. So you don't put the alarm limit where the equipment fails because that that wouldn't work, right? Uh, so you put the lower alarm limits. I think the best way to explain it is it's just like a car. Uh, many cars today are saying, "Okay, I need new brake pads in." Uh, 5,000 kilometers or I need you sprinkler uh, liquid uh, in two hours or something like that. So so put in standard alarm limits and if you want to do predictions using AI, we use uh, Recon, uh, sorry, um, Forecaster for that. And I think it, it, it needs lots of know-how in predictive maintenance. You need know-how no. because it's based the condition. No. So it's I mean easy. the rules itself, the data which you will enter the system because the alarm needs needs to be based on science. Just the software will not work alone. You need to understand your machine. Yeah, but uh, in reality, so I could actually log on to the system. So if you have a, a pump that starts vibrating, it's 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 rarely that uh, in terms of prediction, if, if it fails, it snaps just like that. In one second, it's gone, right? But then it's no good. So in reality, what we can see from data is that problems come creeping, you know? it's It comes slowly and we can detect it as it, as it, is, as it is progressing. Um, and we have, I mean, we have many, many installations uh, where we have alarm limits on and uh, it works uh, fine. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I didn't clarify my point of view. My point of view is that you need to understand your machine well course, because you yeah. enter the data and the algorithm yeah. of the software will be based on the inputs which we will put in. We yes, will have fantastic absolutely. choices, but we need to understand yeah. first, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely, That's, and you don't, yeah. you, and you don't put sensors on every equipment. You put it on critical equipment only. So of course you have to understand your process also. Absolutely. Yes, yes. I think this question is uh, for, for next question for uh, for Matthew. Someone is asking you, Matthew, is the, your system is it a standalone system? Mm. Yes, yeah, so it's just it is. Yes, it is. Yep. So standalone cloud software that uh, only needs a browser to run. Uh, but I do have a slide in the deck there that looks, uh, that shows how we can uh, connect with any other solution that can uh, also connect with us. So we have an API uh, and we typically connect um, through the alerts and, and the messaging that comes from this software. And that could be from condition monitoring, like, like the Blackbird uh, example was exactly uh, the scenario that we, uh, we love. We take those uh, bits of information and rather than someone needing to go to that uh, uh, email or go to that solution, we put it in Team Assurance as an action assigned to somebody that must be certainly closed out. And often that tap on the shoulder for a condition monitoring tool 
there might be six or 10 more actions that need to happen to really see that through right to the end. It may be some uh, predictive maintenance uh, activities, spare parts must be ordered, booked out, line on the time, uh, time on the line must be booked in, communication must be made, coordination needs to happen. That's how we manage and that's how we handshake with the te technology. Um, and so the learning then can go sideways across the organization through team assurance as well. Okay, perfect. Before, yeah, before I move to the next question, at the end, we are going to have a group photo because I love people and I've been working like now. I hate this lockdown and working from home. We usually take selfies. So at the end, after like 10 to 15 minutes, uh, get ready, be dressed, make sure you'll open the camera so you'll have a group photo. I know it's just, I don't want it to be a last minute surprise. So if you are, uh, yes, someone is saying I like that. I love it too. I just came up to me and I said, I would love to have this. So um, let's continue the questions and be ready, get dressed. Women like me, cover your hair if you like. You don't cover it if you don't have to, okay? So uh, go to the next question. It's, uh, there was someone asking you, is there, uh, what is the difference? I think the question, I'll take it for both of you. What is the difference between your system and uh, other like Power BI? The lady, she was asking like, what is the difference between first start fin and Power BI? Uh, well, so our system is a data collection system. So Power BI doesn't collect uh, any data. It's, it's, it's uh, basically uh, just a data manip manipulator, right? It's like Excel uh, times three. Let's uh, say so it's a high, so, high, let's so say it's handling the data layer, okay? Yeah, it's, it's handling the data layer. Blackbird is, uh, Blackbird is collecting the data. It's actually getting the data from the physical world into the, uh, let's Excuse. say, electrical world. <laughs> so so we get, the, yeah. we get the, the data in there and that's what Blackbird is doing. And it's uh, online, uh, it's real time. Um, so when I say real time, it's up to 100 Hertz. So it's hundred times per second uh, update uh, for some of the processes that we have. So it's a real time tool. So we don't work with reports or so numbers are updated all the time. Um, so, so, so Power BI is a, is a uh, we have an interface for Power BI. Uh, so people use Power BI to do, if they're really special dashboards or if they want to do some uh, data manipulation and so on, they use Power BI for their own purposes. Um, one example, we have a, this chicken processing company. They, uh, they pull the data off. So we are monitoring how many chicken they process and they, uh, they pull the data off and they actually pay the farmers based on that data. And that they do in a, on a Power BI application. Um, so they take the data out of Blackbird and then they calculate the prices for the farmers so that the farmers can get their money from the, for the chickens that yes, they yes, buy. Yes. So let's say we build layers. You have the physical flow where you have the hardware, the IoT devices. You have the connectivity, then you push the data on the cloud and we can yeah. use, of course, Power BI at the end. It can integrate with Blackbird, right? Yes, it can. Yes. And, and the same for, a, yeah. yeah. Yes. And we also Sorry. have an API. We also have an API, yeah. So Matthew, the same, would you use the same answer? Yeah, uh, absolutely. We have two layers of reporting. The first one is the, la the layer that the team at the very front line would like to put their hands on related to their team's activities. Uh, this is around safety, safety incidents, uh, quality, quality trending. Um, th this is input by them, that data. The second level uh, in terms of a data layer is the Power BI. We can export all our data and uh, to, through to Power BI and such tools for analytics as well. So there's two layers uh, for two different groups of users. Okay, okay. So that's, uh, that's very important uh, for people to understand because data is a future oil. So we have lots of data, huge data, and we need to measure it in a real time. In, in Power BI, you just see the outcome of the data, but here we yeah. have the role. So uh, whenever we say cloud, whenever we say internet, people get already itchy, security, data security, what is going on? So Fen, first, how about your security of the data? Yeah, so first of all, uh, I think uh, it's true that people have been very uh, skeptical about using cloud services, but I, I, 
as my personal experience is that is really dropping very fast. And especially the Germans had uh, in the past were really, oh, something in the cloud, they wouldn't do it. But that has totally changed. And I think what, uh, in terms of data security, what we, uh, the benefit we have of using Amazon Web Services is that we fly like a flock of birds. That means that we have a lot of people that are, are helping each other getting protected. We're all using the same IoT gateway. And the tools that, uh, that are available uh, to us, such as uh, the artificial intelligence and stuff like that, can never be uh, uh, available on an on-premise uh, solution. And um, uh, also another thing that is very important to understand is that classical software comes in one, one version. Then you have your version 10 of Windows installed on your computer. We actually have updates sometimes several times per week. So whenever one of our customers is asking us to invent something new, we share it with the other customers right away. So our uh, software is growing, it's becoming smarter. Uh, it's becoming uh, living, day, it's becoming yeah, living. It's, it's alive, yeah. So the other yeah. day some guy, a very important customer, he complained about the font size. He says, for a long time, I wanted you to increase the font size of the name of the lines. Is that possible? And I said, hey, we never thought about that. Let, let's do it. And so, uh, few hours later, a thousand people had the, the font size increased. And uh, so it is really, you get the speed, you get the dynamic, you get the computing power. Uh, we are using uh, DynamoDB, which is something called NoSQL, which means that the system will grow automatically as more users uh, come in. So it's uh, scalable, it doesn't get slow as it grows. And so I, I, I personally, I've done software for many years. I'm, I'll never do an on-premise anymore. I, I'll retire before that will happen again because I just see the yeah. benefits of, uh, of having one application and that I can apply the improvements uh, everywhere. When our team was working on EWJ, the software expert in the company were talking about sharing the data and employees and security. And he said, no way for on-premise anymore. It's a single point of failure. No yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. would you like Matt to Matthew yeah. add something about the data security, please? Uh, look, uh, I, I couldn't add too much more. Uh, we're on AWS as well. All the things that uh, Finn spoke about there are the benefits of SaaS software. So um, we- Would you explain what is SaaS for? Software as a no, service? Software, Can you explain? Software, software as, as a service, monthly licensing, but ever new, ever updated, Every new feature uh, is coming in this license. Um, Cloud Security Alliance uh, standard templates. It's a 300 questionnaire with evidence uh, document that we need to supply to uh, large companies. We're in very sensitive companies with sensitive IP. Uh, and uh, that's, that's how we've passed those uh, difficult tests. If they're, if they're going to be sensitive, these are, these are companies that are making the COVID-19 uh, uh, vaccine and things like that right now globally very big companies very sensitive um, we've had to jump through many hoops over the last three years uh, and it's made us very robust and um, yeah and that's this is what you get with cloud software now I, uh, I sometimes at conferences when people are complaining about cl cloud computing I, I ask people so how many are using Outlook and how many how many are using uh, your bank over the internet and you know everybody's raising their hand and saying it's all cloud computing. It's 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 really uh, it's really uh, I think uh, yeah I think it, it will die out. It's for the and for the large companies uh, like the large oil companies. Uh, we have some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world on our system. They they don't discuss it anymore. They they know that if they don't uh, harvest the benefits of using these uh, powerful computers and the functions, the powerful functions, they will lag behind uh, the other ones. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a lot of, um, uh, for instance, for the regulated industries, such as the pharmaceutical industry, uh, the FDA is encouraging uh, companies to experiment with cloud computing and AI and then publish what they do because at the end of the day, we can make better drugs, we can make better, maybe lower the prices of products, uh, we can save the world from, from the climate change. And I, I think the looking at data is probably the best shot uh, to understand what what will what will take place. Yeah, um, it's been an excuse for uh, for not improving for too long in those industries. I think Finn, yeah. to add to your point, uh, in healthcare and in pharmaceutical, uh, that's been heavily regulated. So yeah. that excuse is now 
Yeah, go on. I, if I should say one bad thing about cl cloud computing is uh, it's the lack of competition. Uh, uh, mainly, mm. uh, the cloud computing services come out of the same place, and uh, I, for, as a European, at least, I think it would be great if we had some alternatives. But uh, uh, that's, I mean, someone hopefully can see a business case in in, in doing that one day. But uh, other than that, I think it's uh, it's it's quite good. Um, I'm, I was just wanted to say a thing, and that is uh, when you look at operational excellence um, and, and data, I think the, the classical lean uh, carter where we go into the factory and we ask people, are you ahead or behind? And if you're behind, what's your biggest challenge and what are you doing about it? The, the question, are you ahead or behind? You can use Blackbird for that. What is your biggest challenge? You can use Blackbird for that. But what are you doing about it? That's where you uh, come in from uh, team assurance because that we see a lot of, we can show people a lot of things that they have problems with, but the, the action, the actually change uh, can be managed through your system uh, in team assurance. And so I think that's, that's really a gap uh, that you could actually help us close because I think there's no improvement without change. And, yeah. and the management of those changes, that is so important because Otherwise, you have just bought a, bought a very expensive uh, toy to, to show you all your problems. Um, yes, yes, because closing the actions, that's why we, we, we're doing this uh, the slide of the whole cycle. We did this especially for one of our customers because we told them you just can just, it's not a whole paper. Just seeing the problem and looking at it, you need to close the action. Yeah. So last question for you, Fan, would how long will it take for the Blackbird system to be installed, including some customization, of course, time in, in say calendar days? Uh, well, basically, uh, you know, uh, you in symbiosis, you will, uh, I think you will install it in a company in, uh, in Egypt now. And I believe that in the first day, you will be able to see the data. And actually there's very little customization because it's a standard application. Yes, so we are so excited. We are going yeah. to install two companies, two yeah. very big. I am not allowed to mention the names. Uh -huh. But what I love about the solutions that you are open and you're giving us uh, some yeah. kids to try and show the proof of value that makes people yeah. happy about it. That's amazing. Yeah. So I would like to so thank the, you. Thank you. Of course. The configuration is, uh, the actual configuration in terms of parameters is, is uh, one hour, two hour. What, yeah. you need to config, what you need to configure is the stop courses that the operators should enter to understand what type of stop courses do, the, do you have on this type of line. Uh, you know, like missing materials or waiting for a mechanic or error on station four. And so it's mainly, uh, it's not so much a configuration, it's more uh, how to embed the process into uh, to the Blackbird system. And it's something people do, maybe they give it a first shot in the first day and then they adjust it over the next, the few next weeks. And it's something the customer can do by themselves. So okay. a, Blackbird, a Blackbird application is, it's, 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 a question, it's, it's days. Um, yes. It's not, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And Matthew, would you like to add something? Yes. So the, depending on the maturity of the organisation, and this is why we're partnering with with our with our partners like yourself, uh, Shireen, um, where a client needs to do some work first. Uh, this is one scenario, but then we also have very mature clients who have hit a hit a ceiling, and in those clients, uh, on day three, uh, our our implementers have nothing to do. Uh, because it's yeah, so yeah, smooth yeah. to put yes, in. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, and, yeah. and I love it because when we had this with our customer in Dubai, when we had this experience together, Matthew, because people are hungry for it. They are hungry for having the place of the actions. I always remember the, the director when he said, we walk on the floor, we have ideas, we come up across things, but I want it to be faster. I don't want to lose these ideas. So with the actions, which we write on team assurance and these things, it just closes the loop as he said, so it's, uh, it's amazing. So uh, someone is asking a question, Fen. It's about, the, he has his company and has a problem with energy consumption. So he's asking, yeah. can Blackbird be utilized for monitoring energy consumption per machine? Yes, um, yes it can. Um, and um, you will actually get more than uh, monitoring the uh, energy consumption because, because it can, if you add, uh, for instance, from Schneider an energy meter, or you just add uh, simple uh, coils to the to the to the courts, you will you will you can see your power consumption as you are producing. 
But again, you can also hear uh, at uh, the alarms. So you can see if, uh, if all of a sudden the machine starts to use more energy, that means that, uh, uh, that something is wrong on the machine. Maybe it's, you know, it needs to be greased or oiled. And um, we're using this function. Um, uh, we have a, a company in Ireland. Uh, it's actually a dairy uh, production. So the trucks are bringing milk and uh, and they put it into a big underground tank and the maintenance manager wanted us to put a vibration tank uh, sensor on the pump which is in the tank and i said to him, no we don't want to do that we don't want to have things in milk why don't we just monitor your power consumption because we can actually see well, how much power when he's pumping the milk and when the tank is empty the pump uses uh, less and uh, and so he's both metering his power consumption but also he can monitor the condition of the pump and also to detect if the tank is empty just by looking at the power consumption of the pump so it's a uh, yes i like the idea if you if you allow me to add finn because that's yeah. what we face do as our customer so that when we use the fact bird the box we can add multi sensors yeah. so we can measure other things it's not only about oe we can connect it to other sensors cameras yeah. whatever data energy consumption and we can correlate the energy consumption to the productivity Exactly. You can understand what is going on and you can set the alarm and that's better than just having energy monitoring system alone and you're mm -hmm. having this uh, productivity system alone. You can have one yeah. source of truth for everything. Yeah. So I think we are done with all questions. I would invite everyone, please open your cameras if you like to join us in a group photo and smile. That would be great to have you everyone with your smiles. That's amazing. Hi, Patrick. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Okay. Hi, Randa. Welcome, Ahmed. Thank you for joining us. So, hi, Nauku. Amazing to see you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Ahmed. Everyone join, please. We'd have a, a group photo. Okay. So, anyone else wants to join? Okay. Hi, Mr. Mohammed Nabil. Hi. Nice seeing you. Okay, I love this. Mohammed is bringing his son. Please come into the screen. It's amazing to have the future generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Ahmad Khalifa, please. Hi, hi, Mehdi Cohen. Yeah, great seeing you. Someone else? Hi, Randa. Thank you for bringing your child in. Where is he going? Ask him to come. <laughs> I can bring my little uh, child as well. He's now two meters and three centimeters. Please, please bring him in. <laughs> no, he was just here before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bring whomever you like in your family to come. Ahmed Khalifa, we can see your camera switch it off. So please join. Okay, Ahmed Sabahi. Okay. So I think we have those who can share with us. So smile. Thumbs up. Yes. Even with technology, you can still be human. Mm -hmm. We can see each other. We can be. We can still have. We can still be people because we can't miss being people. We can't miss the energy. We want to collaborate, and this is a fantastic example of collaboration. And we will have it as a video, so we'll share it with everyone. We will share the presentation and everything. Okay. Hi Nada. So we'll take a photo with Nada. Because Nada was just was not in the group, so it's amazing. One smile. Great. Okay. So uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us yeah. today. And let's meet more. Thank you, Fen. I know it's your weekend. Thank you, Matthew. I know it's your weekend. So it's amazing to have everyone. And it's weekend for Egypt as well. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for Thanks. being keen to join. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.